Hello and welcome to today's webinar, which is hosted by Food Ingredients First and sponsored by Barry Calabout. I'm Gaynor Selby and I'm the moderator today. I'm an editor at CNS Media, which is the publisher of the world of Food Ingredients, Food Ingredients First and Nutrition Insights. We are also the sister company of Innova Market Insights. This webinar is entitled, How to Create Indulgent Plant-Based Treats. I'll be presenting some useful information from Innova Market Insights. This includes some of the latest developments in the plant-based category and how trends identified by Innova Market Insights are impacting plant-based new product development. We will then hear from our two speakers from Barry Calabout, Joelle Perriard, Chef Chocolatier, and Camille Lanoy, Brand Development Manager. Joelle was trained in Switzerland and gained experience as a pastry chef in various restaurants. In 2010, he and his wife ran a hacienda, a boutique hotel in Ecuador. And coming back to Europe, he joined Barry Calabout and the Chocolate Academy in 2012 as a technical and export advisor and later as the head of the Chocolate Academy. Today, Joelle continues his passion for chocolate and he will share his take on texture and flavor elements that are key to a truly indulgent experience. Showcasing his signature plant-based recipes, he will provide culinary recommendations to enhance taste and texture in plant-based products. The second speaker is Camille, who is trained as a marketing specialist and food engineer. She's passionate about food innovation and has gained experience in bringing new products to the market. Today, she was responsible for Plant Craft, Barry Calabout's vegan and dairy-free range of indulgent chocolate, cocoa, and nut products for food and beverage manufacturers. Okay, so there will be our two speakers. But before we delve a little deeper into what this webinar is all about, I'd like to tell our listeners that you can submit any questions through our Q&A engagement tool. Any questions that we don't have time for will be answered via email following the presentation. And this webinar will also be available on demand on foodingredientsfirst.com. A link will be emailed to you after the presentation. So, how to create indulgent plant-based treats. Launches of plant-based products have significantly increased in all sweet categories, answering consumers' need for tasty and healthy products. Iconic brands like Magnum 2019 or Galaxy this year have introduced new plant-based products with indulgence at heart. This is growing the category from niche to emerging mainstream. During this webinar, you will learn insights on how to make your plant-based creations truly indulgent. You will also hear about the new dairy-free milk chocolate, a delicious plant-based alternative to milk chocolate. This chocolate is part of Plant Craft. Let me begin first with a closer look at how trends in the plant-based space are influencing MPD. Okay, so there's a growing interest in plant-based ingredients and plant-based eating is moving from trend to food revolution status. This presents mainstream opportunities for those in the plant-based space. And an Market Insights consumer survey reveals that three in five global consumers say that they incorporate more plant-based ingredients in their diet. When asked, which claim do you prefer when buying alternatives to meat and or dairy, six in 10 global consumers chose plant-based. Average annual growth in F&B launches show an 8% increase for vegetarian claims and a 23% increase in vegan claims. And the real jump is a 57% rise in plant-based claims. There are different ways of approaching plant-based innovation. We can take a look at some of them in a bit more detail here. There's inherently plant-based, which means a product is made with intact plant-based ingredients with little or no modification needed. Another approach is easily adaptable, where simple ingredient switches make the product plant-based. 
The example here is with a snack product. It shows Ella baked veggie crackers with chickpeas and paprika. Next, we have a new category approach where plant ingredients are called out in trendy categories, including soft drinks, coffees, and teas. And the final approach is alternative to animal base, which talks about products that are formulated to replicate an animal-based product using plant ingredients. We can see the example here of raw plant-based ice cream, which was launched in the UK in December 2019. Onto the next slide. And we can see that because plant-based innovation is diversifying, it's showing up in more subcategories. These categories can be seen in the graph here, which shows the top subcategories as a percentage of confectionery, bakery, dairy, desserts and ice cream launches tracked with a plant-based vegan claim and the global difference between 2015 and 2019. We can see that in the dairy alternative drink subcategory, these claims edged up from 16.7% to 18.6%. While in the subcategory of chocolate blocks, it decreased from 12.1% to 8.9%. However, the chocolate block subcategory with a plant-based vegan claim is growing with a 13% increase. The decrease in the sweet biscuits and cookies category is marginal, going from 8% to 8.4%. Whereas in the spoonable dairy yogurt category, there was an increase from 5.4% to 7.9%. In non-dairy ice cream and frozen yogurt, the increase is from 2.4% to 5.2%. So this data really shows that there's been more of a marked increase in subcategories involving non-dairy ice cream and spoonable frozen yogurt, as well as the chocolate block subcategory with a plant-based vegan claim. Once again, that's growing by 13%. Next, we can see the rise in vegan and plant-based bakery and ice cream innovation. It's illustrated here with some examples. Earlier this year in the UK market, Deli France introduced their new vegan croissants, which contain quinoa for adding a sweet caramelized flavor. Another example is from Plantastic Pure Plant Power, orange-flavored parsnip cake baked with pecan pieces. And here's the new Magnum non-dairy ice cream. In this non-dairy sea salt caramel version, Magnum introduces its first dairy-free dessert bar that indulges goodness without compromising on taste. The packaging clearly marks out plant-based indulgence. The next slide is all about texture. Texture is a big component now in the plant-based space as globally more consumers are recognizing the influence of texture. That translates into texture becoming a unique selling proposition for brands and companies. They foster their creativity in texture, and this is showing up in NPD. According to an Innova Market Insights survey, seven in 10 global consumers said that texture gives food and beverages a more interesting experience. There's a good example here showing a smooth orange vegan galaxy bar released in the UK last November. And onto the next slide, we can see that indulgence in the plant-based space is really coming to the fore also. Plant-based indulgence has increased health benefits. We can see some examples which combine indulgence and health here on the slide. There's True Women chocolate bars with a 100% plant-fueled protein. And then snacking chocolate maker Candid unveiled its whole plant low-sugar chocolate called Noons to U.S. consumers in March of this year. So the chocolate category plays on indulgence to allure, to allure consumers, and the same is true of plant-based indulgence. So watch out for more plant-based indulgence and MPD. Okay, that concludes the presentation from Innova Market Insights today. So I'll now hand over to Joel. So welcome to my place, to that kitchen here in Zurich. Uh, I'm uh, happy to be here and to present you a few products, a few ingredients. And uh, what we're going to do is a creation uh, on dairy-free uh, products. 
So when it comes to dairy free, uh, of course, uh, especially here in Switzerland, we like to have milk chocolate and milk chocolate is a big challenge uh, to create a product on dairy free. So we have created a chocolate, uh, milk chocolate like, uh, basically containing a plant based product. Uh, so the ingredients that I used are all made of plants, um, which uh, is a very interesting topic. So when it comes to dairy free, it doesn't mean only vegan, but it means really dairy free. So the factory we produce the product are without dairy. Dairy free, um, especially vegan, um, it was a niche before. Today it's be really become a trend that uh, we sh really should take in account, basically. The key point of dairy free uh, is taste. So when it comes to food, automatically we, we, we are thinking about taste, we are thinking about textures, and we really, really would like to combine this, uh, these textures together to create a product which is very indulgent. Um, what about the product that I would like to introduce first? Um, is that milk chocolate-like, uh, meaning it's a new product. It's really creamy, it's really a milky flavor, and uh, of course, it's well-being because of plant-based uh, ingredients. It tastes very good, as good as a real milk chocolate. So what I would like to create with you today is a frozen snacking bar, uh, which contain that chocolate and which con will, will contain as well other ingredients. So when I play with ingredients and to create plant-based product, what I really would like is to start playing with nuts. There is so many nuts. And on plant-based, there is a, a huge choice which can bring you a nice, uh, very nice combination of flavors and texture as well. So the first thing that um, I would like to explain to you, it's the product that we're going to create now. First, we need an ice cream. Okay, so the ice cream, in normal ice cream, we have cream and milk and sometimes some eggs. Today, what we're going to do is replacing the milk uh, with, for example, almond milk or hazelnut milk, um, or you can even use uh, soya milk, for example. Uh, for that recipe, what we're going to do is base our recipe on uh, um, hazelnut milk. Okay, it's uh, rice milk uh, flavored with, uh, with, uh, with hazelnut paste. So that's going to be the base. And then we're going to add inside the, the recipe uh, some soya cream, some stabilizer in the ice cream, no eggs, of course. And then um, at the end, what we have in the ice cream, because we want to have uh, the final taste of hazelnuts. So therefore, uh, we're going to take an hazelnut paste. So the first thing to do is warming up the ingredients, like the liquids, and then at 50 degrees, add, starting to add the sugars, the stabilizer, bringing all this to a boil, and then mix it with the hazelnut praline. Then, this base of ice cream needs to be frozen with the, with the machine. And afterwards, we have the, the ice cream ready to be used for further steps. So therefore, I prepare here my ice cream, which is frozen. Okay, when it comes out from the ice cream machine, the texture is ready to be piped in the mold, for example, in that case. The next ingredients that we uh, are going to use uh, inside our snacking is a praline, we call it praline à l'ancienne, meaning that the praline pieces, um, well, the praline, you really feel pieces of sugar uh, and the nuts as well. So it's not completely refined, which gives you a very interesting, interesting texture to this. With this praline, what I do is adding about 10% of uh, rap seeds oil, for example, that's when the product is frozen, that we have a like kind of sauce inside and not something very hard. So that's the second ingredients. The third ingredients are cocoa nibs. So in our portfolio on plant-based, we really have uh, different sizes of cocoa nibs. And for inside the snacking, what we use are the big one and small one for the decorations. So we need these two ingredients. And from that point, what we will do is jumping in a close-up to really see what's, what's going on here in the kitchen. So when it comes to ice cream, what we do is taking a mold. In that mold, 
we're going to pipe the ice cream first, not completely full, but more or less until the half of the quantity. So we pipe a half of the mold, which gave us some space later on to add here our praline. So that's the ice cream. The praline comes directly piped and be very gener generous here inside the ice cream. Real nice layer because that's really one of the ingredients we would like to fill at the end. Following by the cocoa nibs. So we take some cocoa nibs. We really add on top of the praline. And then we will do is closing these ice cream snacking bars with ice cream. Therefore, from that point, what we do with a small spatula is taking the, the quantity that we don't need and our snacking are ready to be frozen. So that goes in the freezer for a couple of hours until the snacking bars are completely frozen. And afterwards, the next step will be the dipping. So we are back here. The important things after that is taking the snacking bars out of the mold and with an enrobing belt, proceeding to the coating of these nice snacking bars. As I cannot show you here on the enrobing belt, I will show you the finite re results and we were going to take one piece to cut it and to see the filling. Especially when you do add for a milk chocolate and a coating, you need to add some oil inside. So we will add uh, a certain percentage of oil to make the chocolate a little bit more liquid. And then the chocolate will be setting to have a perfect uh, snap whenever the, 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 the frozen bars are ready to eat. So here we have some bars which are ready. Okay, So I will put it here on the close up again. And then what we will do is cutting this small bar. So I will jump in the, the close up again. So the idea, whenever the snacking is, is ready, gave us mini bars like this, fantastic snacking, with the cocoa nibs in the middle, the praline, and we have here a very indulgent dairy-free product. So this kind of recipe can be exchanged, meaning we can replace the hazelnut praline or the hazelnut paste with all type of nuts, almond, uh, macadamia, pecan nuts. So the diversity of that recipe is very big to always surprise your customer. So I, I hope you really enjoy that taste, the recipe, and we will see each other for the question at the end of the session. Thank you so much, and I wish you a very good day. Thank you, Joël. So we've seen earlier with Gaynor the rise of plant-based products in all categories with a focus on taste and texture. And great tasting ingredients are the base of a delicious plant-based experience. Aware of this shift on the market, at Barrical About, we introduced PlantCraft, a range of plant-based products crafted with indulgence at heart. It all started with the rise of the next generation of consumers, the Centennials. Also called Generation Z, Centennials are aged 9 to 23 years old and represent over 2 billion consumers. This generation has a positive way to look at life, and that definitely includes food. They are looking for products that are good for them and good for the planet. Good for them from a nutritional point of view, but most importantly, good in taste. This generation will not compromise. So plant-based products are definitely fitting Centennial's needs. But if you want to win with them and win with the increasing number of consumers that are adopting diets that fit their personal requirements, you need to win on taste. After all, taste is the key purchase driver for consumers. That's been proven by the most recent successful plant-based savory launches. For example, the Impossible Water from Burger King or the Plant Kitchen range of plant-based ready-made meals from Marks & Spencer. Both of them have one thing in common. They were created with a flavor-first mentality. 
and launches in all sweet categories are following that direction, including established brands renowned for their indulgent products such as Magnum or Galaxy. Plant-based is not niche anymore, and these products are indulgent, delicious, and by the way, they are plant-based. And that's exactly the mindset with which we developed our new 100% dairy-free milk chocolate, a chocolate with the milk chocolate taste that consumers love, made from plants only. It possesses the creaminess, the mouthfeel, and the slight caramel notes that consumers love about milk chocolate, yet it's plant-based. We selected plants that have a naturally rich mouthfeel for a chocolate with a smooth and creamy texture. And key consideration for the centennials, this chocolate is high in fiber and vitamin E, so they can indulge mindfully. This chocolate was developed for a confectionery and unrobing application, but also as you saw in Joelle's recipe, it's perfectly suitable in ice cream as well. Now, Joelle earlier mentioned taste, texture, and great ingredients as essential in creating an indulgent plant-based experience. And that's why we created an entire range of vegan ingredients from chocolate to inclusions, decorations, or fillings, so you can develop truly indulgent plant-based creations in all types of applications. For example, from using nut paste as a base for dairy alternative drinks to using vegan coatings for vegan snack bars. Now, in the world of plant-based products, several claims and stamps exist. Vegan, dairy-free, plant-based, non-dairy, free from. Each of them carry regulatory requirements in terms of allergen labeling. What we realized is that consumers do not necessarily understand why the may contain milk statement is present on the pack of vegan products. And for retailers, the fewer allergens on pack, the better. To make this complex matter simpler, as part of the plant craft range, Barry Calabar developed a range of dairy-free products that do not contain any detectable dairy. These are made in fully segregated facilities where no dairy is allowed. From chocolate to nuts and cocoa powders, this dairy-free range enables the creation of indulgent creations without dairy and without allergen decoration. It's an exciting journey we are on, and we would love to co-create the next generation of plant-based products with you. If you'd like to co-create with us on one of your brands or taste our plant-based product, feel free to get in touch with us on barricalabout.com. You can also download on our website the Plant Craft brochure to get more information about this wonderful range. This concludes my presentation, and now we will go into the live Q&A session. Thank you. Okay, there were some great insights there from our Barry Calabout speakers. Uh, and it was really good to see Joel there demonstrating in the kitchen. So thanks for that. We've got some good questions coming in. Um, let's start with a question about the growing significance of plant-based food. One listener says, why is plant-based food becoming so important today? Is there any customer value if we claim a product as plant-based? Yes, so for this question, uh, I mentioned Centennials previously as a generation that wants food that is good for them and good for the planet. Well, plant-based food is exactly fitting their expectations, and that's why it's increasing in popularity today. And that's due to several reasons. The first one is health reasons and the rise of personal diets. Uh, more and more consumers adopt diets with more plant-based products, such as vegan diets or flexitarian diets, uh, and consumers believe it's healthier. Um, the second reason is that consumers are more aware of the environmental impact of animal products and they aim to lower their carbon footprint by consuming more plants. Okay, good stuff. Um, there's some more questions coming in. Another one asks, should plant-based treats mimic the mouthfeel and taste of traditional desserts which rely on the use of dairy and animal-based ingredients? If there is a unique style, what does it taste like? Um, maybe I will uh, answer from a, a more uh, a marketing point of view and then uh, Joelle can comment on this. Um, I actually don't believe that there should be a specific plant-based style uh, of indulgence. Um, indulgence is actually about a combination of great taste, great flavors and textures. Uh, and that's really what we aim to demonstrate with this webinar is that indulgence is possible with plant-based ingredients as well. 
Um, and that's exactly what we did, for example, with the new dairy-free milk chocolate uh, that really has the mouthfeel and the creaminess of milk chocolate, but without the dairy. Yeah, and for, so, um, for me, yeah. Obviously, uh, yeah, for, for sure, great taste, interesting, interesting textures uh, are key components of indulgence, and um, are things that I really look for when I'm creating a new product, uh, be it plant-based or animal-based, um, anyway. So, for example, in my ice cream, I achieve a creamy mouthfeel and delicious texture, uh, all with plant-based ingredients, actually. Okay, and here's another one for you, Joel. Somebody asked, what do you see as the top three challenges to creating an indulgent experience in plant-based products? Specifically, how do you overcome taste challenges? Okay, so for me, I believe that yeah, the three bigger challenges are, of course, as we say, taste, uh, texture, and um, obviously uh, functionality as well. So as I said already in the, in the previous questions, uh, taste should be the key point. If it's not tasty, then, then yeah, no success. And then it, it would definitely needs to be indulgent. Uh, to have a great texture with crunch, with something soft, etc. Uh, I would definitely go for a creation with nut and obviously with chocolate, of course, because these two worlds are very, very wide. And in terms of functionality, okay, for sure, we are very challenged to replace egg and, and all dairy products. So therefore, um, concerning the milk, we can really replace it with lots of different nut milk. So all products which are not based. Egg, for example, can be pre uh, yeah, pre replaced um, with stabilizer, uh, as it's the case already today in the world of dairy ice cream, but of course, uh, preferably with natural ones. Uh, inulin, for example, can be used for, to bring the body in, in, within the recipes. And there are lots of alternative uh, with non dairy cream and butter as well on the market. Yeah. Mm. Okay, interesting stuff. Thanks, Joel. Um, and this is one one for you, Camille. This is about uh, the plant craft range from Barry Calabout. Are all products of the plant craft range available all around the world? Uh, so actually, some products are only available in certain parts of the world. Um, so in Europe, the full range is available. Uh, in North America. We have dark and milk-like dairy-free melting chocolates, inclusions as well. Uh, and we also have nut-based solutions and cocoa powders, uh, all part of the plant craft range. Uh, in any case, you can contact the, your regional Barry Clubout sales representative in case you want more information. Okay, thanks very much. Um, here's another one about um, overcoming challenges. What are the challenges regarding the production of plant-based products? Yeah, so actually, in this case, the challenges start at the development phase, actually. Um, so when you develop a plant-based product, you need to replace animal ingredients that have a key role in some applications, especially in terms of taste, texture, and mouthfeel. Um, in terms of production, uh, plant-based solutions without allergen warnings like dairy-free require full segregation. Um, you can also produce in the same environment as animal-based products, but in this case, you should strive to reduce animal ingredient contamination as much as possible. Uh, and in that case, you'll have a dairy allergen labeling, and that's something that more and more consumers do not want to see or do not really understand. Mm. Okay, uh, we have another one here on the same kind of topic about um, allergens. Um, a listener is asking, what is done to staunch the advantageous contamination of non-milk chocolate with milk allergen from shared equipment? If you can take that one also, Camille. Yeah, um, so in this case, we have two ways of avoiding dairy contamination uh, on our lines. So when we produce on lines mixed with dairy, we clean as much as possible. Um, in fat-based matrix, such as chocolates, um, it's more difficult than with water-based products, uh, obviously. Um, and then the second thing is to avoid the presence of dairy. We also dedicated several factories to dairy-free production only. Um, and it means that there absolutely no dairy is allowed in these factories, and no dairy can be detected in our products. So there are two ways of doing it. Okay, yes, thanks for clarifying that important point. Um, okay, looking at some more questions coming in, I think we've got time for just a couple more. Um, another listener asks, can a chocolate be called milk chocolate if it doesn't contain any dairy? Uh, the answer is uh, no. So you cannot call a chocolate milk chocolate if it doesn't have any dairy. 
uh, that's a, a legal um, a legal matter. Okay, and one more, I think. Somebody here is asking what Barry Calabout's suggestions are for a completely allergen-free indulgent product. How would you achieve the same level of decadence without using nuts? Okay, maybe I will, I will take it. I mean, in in, in component, um, in combination with uh, with uh, on recipe, I believe. Uh, so for me, of course, chocolate can be really be used, uh, or any cacao products uh, which are which are produced in non dairy uh, factories. Uh, when it comes to fruits, yeah, we have so many fruits uh, on the world that uh, it's uh, yeah really uh, the main ingredients probably as well. Uh, cereals. Depending on which uh, which cereals we are talking about, and uh, yeah, dairy-free biscuits to use uh, as inclusions and and as base in in dessert, for example. Okay, thank you. Right, I think that's just about all we have time for. But just a quick reminder that if we didn't get to your question today, it will be answered uh, by email. Um, thanks again to our speakers. And thanks to everyone for joining this webinar. Thanks very much and goodbye.